Welcome back, traders. So, let's get started. Inducement zones, also known as liquidity zones, are areas where market participants are induced to enter or exit trades due to the presence of significant liquidity. These zones often represent areas of high buying or selling interest and can provide valuable insights into potential market reversals or continuations. So, what is the exact definition of the inducement? Inducement zones occur at specific points or areas in the market where traders believe it is the right time to enter a trade based on their analysis and trading system. These zones are strategically used by central banks and large financial institutions to manipulate and lure retail traders into their traps. The purpose of inducing traders into these zones is to create liquidity and attract more buyers and sellers. Once a sufficient number of retail traders have taken positions in the direction perceived as favorable, the market is swiftly moved in the opposite direction, resulting in a significant reversal or breakout. This sudden move catches many retail traders off guard, leading to stop-loss orders being triggered and adding to the liquidity that the smart money players sought to exploit. Most of the time, inducement zones tend to appear at specific points in zones in the market. These areas often include order blocks. Areas where significant orders have been executed or pending orders are clustered can act as liquidity zones. Hence, inducement often takes place within order blocks, which are areas where market manipulators create false moves or reversals to deceive traders and induce them into taking positions. For example, as you can see here, price after formation of the BOSs to the upside and also generating bullish order blocks has pushed to the downside and tapped into the upper bullish order block, and after showing a tiny pullback to the upside, sharply dropped to the downside. It is obvious that the market did not respect the upper order block. Instead, the price dropped sharply and swept the liquidity resting below this zone by triggering the stop losses of traders who had entered the market at this level. After successfully sweeping the liquidity, the price used the upper zones as inducement levels. It then reversed direction from the extreme order block and exhibited a strong upward movement, continuing the bullish trend with significant momentum. Number two is dynamic trend line and channel breaks. Inducement can occur when a dynamic trend line or channel is broken, leading traders to believe in a strong directional move. However, market manipulators may exploit these breakouts to trap traders before reversing the price. When a trend line or a channel is broken, it can create a sense of urgency among traders to enter positions in the direction of the breakout. Market manipulators may induce a false breakout to trigger a surge of buying or selling before reversing the price in the opposite direction. As you can see here, we have a bearish dynamic trend line that the price has respected multiple times. This trend line has created a significant liquidity zone above itself, resulting from the stop loss orders of traders who entered the market with sell positions, expecting the price to reverse to the downside each time it touches the trend line. These traders also anticipate a buying opportunity if the price breaks the bearish trend line to the upside. However, as you can see, the price was artificially pushed to the upside by market makers using a large red momentum candle. This sudden upward movement resulted in the sweeping of the significant liquidity that had accumulated above the trend line. As a result, the stop losses of retail traders who had entered the market with short positions were triggered. Additionally, this breakout generates excitement among more traders, leading them to believe that it's the right time to ride the upward wave. They place their buy orders and enter the market, while also adjusting their stop losses below the trend line, creating a potential target for the price. However, as you can see, the price swiftly reverses and moves downwards with large momentum candles. In this scenario designed by market manipulators, both buyers and sellers' stop losses are triggered, allowing the market to absorb a significant amount of liquidity and fuel its momentum. Next is support and resistance levels. Inducement can occur near key support or resistance levels. Market manipulators may create false breakouts or reversals around these levels to induce traders into entering positions before reversing the price. Let's see an example to see how large financial institutions like banks use inducement zones to manipulate the market and trap unsuspecting traders. Take a look at this resistance level here and see how the price reaches it but strongly gets rejected. That's no coincidence. The banks know exactly how retail traders think and use it to their advantage. Imagine you are a beginner trader, and you see this breakout. Excited you jump in, thinking it's time to ride the upward wave, but here is the twist. The big market makers push the price up just a bit to trigger the stop loss of the traders who had entered with sell positions based on the resistance level. 
So this scenario gains traders more confidence and lures them into the market. And guess what? Other beginner traders join the move too and have placed their stop loss below the resistance level following the crowd. However, the price then closes below the resistance level, leaving traders fearful and uncertain about the market direction. Other banks also recognize this as a trap and manipulation and join the movement. As you can see, the market starts heading down, aiming for the liquidity zones created by the stop losses of traders who had entered with long positions during the breakout. Ultimately, those who fell into the trap are left with losses. Number four is Fibonacci retracement level. Fibonacci retracement levels are popular among traders for identifying potential reversal points. Inducement may occur at these retracement levels to deceive traders into taking positions before a price reversal. As you can see in this chart, the price has formed a bullish break of the structure by breaking above the previous higher high, leaving an inefficiency behind. By adding the Fibonacci retracement tool, we can see that the price initially reacted slightly at a commonly used retracement level. However, it quickly reversed and pushed downwards, triggering the stop losses of traders who had entered long positions based on the retracement levels. The price then tapped into the extreme order block and reversed its direction, moving back up again. Next is the breakout of consolidation patterns. Inducement can occur when a price breaks out of a consolidation pattern, such as a range or triangle. Traders may perceive a breakout as a strong signal, leading them to enter positions. However, the market manipulators can reverse the price direction after trapping traders. In this example, we can see that the price was in an accumulation phase, consolidating within a range. However, it was deliberately pushed downwards, creating a false impression that the ranging market phase was coming to an end, and now the market is about to push to the downside. This induced traders to enter the market with short positions, expecting a bearish continuation. However, the price cleverly used the accumulation phase as an inducement, creating a fake breakout below the consolidation range. By sweeping the liquidity from the sell side, it swiftly reversed direction and experienced a strong upward momentum. Number six is the swing lows and swing highs. Inducement zones can appear at swing highs and swing lows, which are levels where market manipulators may deceive traders by creating false breakouts or reversals. Next is the news events and data releases. Market manipulators can exploit news events or economic data releases to induce traders into taking positions based on the initial reaction to the news. They may create false moves or exaggerated price swings to trap traders before reversing the price direction. Traders, we have thoroughly covered the inducement zones that frequently appear on real price charts, enabling us to develop a solid understanding of how to identify them. Now it's time to take a more specialized look at the inducement from the point of view of the smart money concept. So let's move on to the next topic. Before we proceed to analyze real price charts and see how we can identify inducement zones and how to utilize them in our trading plan, let's take a moment to understand the theory behind inducement from the point of view of smart money. This will help us establish a solid understanding of how price movement occurs in the market. To illustrate this concept, let's suppose we have a bullish structure like this that simulates price movement. As you can see, the price is currently in an uptrend. After a strong upward rally, the price experienced a retracement or pullback to the downside. This retracement is often seen as a temporary pause or consolidation in the overall bullish movement. As the selling pressure weakens and bullish momentum resumes, the price is likely to continue in its primary upward direction. In continuation, we see that the price made attempts to push higher, but failed to break the recent structure resistance. Instead, it formed an internal high followed by a minor pullback to the downside. However, with increasing bullish momentum, the price made a strong upward move, breaking the previous structure resistance and creating a new higher high. As a result, now have a break of structure to the upside and a demand zone associated with the break of structure, which has the potential to reverse the price. However, it is important to note that there is another nearby zone that has not been mitigated yet, creating a potential source of confusion for traders in determining which zone to trade. As we have discussed before, inducement areas are created by large financial institutions and smart money traders like central banks. They are designed to deceive retail traders into taking buy or sell positions in the market, ultimately creating more liquidity for them. So it's essential to be aware of these areas and understand their potential impact on the market. Indeed, this order block can be considered an inducement level, 
market makers or large players artificially manipulated the price action to create a structure that would deceive traders into believing that the price was likely to reverse to the downside. As a result, many traders entered the market by opening sell positions expecting a bearish move. Their stop-loss orders were placed above the internal high expecting the price to respect the structure and reverse lower. However, the market makers had different intentions and the price eventually pushed to the upside, triggering the stop losses of those short positions and providing liquidity for the market makers' buying activity. This manipulation resulted in a sharp upward movement. And also, this resulted in the formation of a fake demand zone and order block. It appears that the price was artificially manipulated to deceive traders and create more liquidity for large smart money traders, including central banks and major financial institutions. In the subsequent, we see that the price continues its downward movement and reaches the previously identified inducement zone. As expected, a small pullback to the upside occurs, driven by the buying pressure of traders who had entered the market with long positions from this zone. This pullback can create a sense of reassurance for other price action traders, leading them to enter the market with long positions as well. They place their stop loss orders below the inducement zone, believing that it will hold as a significant support level. It is crucial to spot a liquidity sweep pattern that occurs before the price reaches our area of interest. This pattern indicates the absorption of liquidity and provides an opportunity to confirm the strength of the demand in our identified area. We use liquidity sweeps as a confluence factor before entering a position. The underlying theory is that the market requires liquidity to sustain its movement. If the price fails to sweep liquidity before reaching an area of interest, there is a high probability that the price will utilize that zone as liquidity to fuel its momentum. This collective trading activity creates a clearly defined liquidity zone located just below the inducement zone. This zone is characterized by the presence of traders who have placed their stop-loss orders within it. These stop-loss orders act as potential fuel for the market's momentum. Indeed, the price successfully swept the liquidity behind the inducement zone, confirming the anticipated confluence. Our next step is to monitor the price as it enters the higher time frame demand zone. Once the price action is pulled into the higher time frame order block, we shift our focus to the lower time frame. Within the higher time frame demand zone, we search for a change of character in the lower time frame. Additionally, we identify a new order block, in this case, a demand zone on the lower time frame. When these conditions align, we consider a long opportunity, with our target set at the external liquidity, which serves as the take profit level. Now that we have a general understanding of how inducement zones can be utilized in our trading plan to enhance profitability, let's see the potential scenarios that may unfold when the price reaches the inducement zones. Before diving into the next topic, it's important to note a crucial step in your trading journey, backtesting your strategies. Before applying any strategy to your real account, it's recommended that you backtest it at least 100 times. This is because a strategy's win rate is dependent on various factors, such as market conditions, trader psychology, trading sessions, risk management, and time frame. There are two potential scenarios that may occur when price taps into the inducement zones. In the first scenario, we see that the price reaches the inducement zone and initially shows a slight reaction. It then continues to move below or above the inducement zone, sweeping the liquidity that has accumulated in that area. However, the price eventually closes within the inducement zone confirming the formation of a valid bullish or bearish POI pattern. To safely enter the market, it is advisable to wait for confirmation in a lower time frame. This confirmation acts as a signal that validates the trading decision. Without such confirmation, it is best to refrain from initiating any position. In the second scenario, price enters the inducement area and initially reacts slightly, but instead of respecting the inducement zone, disregards it. This leads to the triggering of stop losses placed above the inducement zone, resulting in a liquidity sweep pattern. Subsequently, price continues its movement towards the next order block zone located at the extreme. As mentioned earlier, the presence of a liquidity sweep pattern before price reaches our area of interest offers a high probability entry opportunity. This pattern signifies the absorption of liquidity and serves as a confirmation of the strength of the identified demand or supply. By recognizing this pattern, we can seize the opportunity to enter the market with increased confidence. Now, let's switch to the real chart and see some real inducement examples. On the screen, we have the 15-minute chart of the euro-dollar currency pair. 
it is evident that the price is currently in a robust downtrend. Furthermore, we can identify a bearish break of structure, characterized by the price breaking and closing below a previous lower low. By analyzing the chart, we have identified two potential supply areas where the price could potentially reverse and resume its bearish trend. However, the key question is, how can we determine which of these zones is safer to trade and more likely to be respected by price? Upon closer examination, we can see that the price failed to break the recent low in a single downward movement. Instead, it formed an internal low followed by a minor pullback to the upside. Subsequently, the price gained significant bearish momentum and experienced a sharp downward movement, ultimately leading to a break in the market structure. Consequently, we have identified a break of structure and two potential supply zones associated with the break. These zones have the potential to trigger a price reversal. One of the supply zones is located at the extreme end, while the second one is in proximity to the break of structure. As mentioned earlier, this zone can be considered an inducement. One reason is that price deliberately created a structure that would deceive traders into believing that price was about to change direction to the upside. However, as observed, this zone induced traders to enter the market with buy positions and place their stop losses below the internal low. But price subsequently moved sharply downwards, triggering those stop losses. Secondly, this zone appears to be a perfect bearish order block for smart money traders. Many smart money traders are likely to place their sell orders in this zone and also set their stop losses just above it. As a result, a significant liquidity pool is created just above the zone. As previously mentioned, inducement zones are strategically designed by large financial institutions, such as banks, to deceive traders into taking buy or sell positions in the market, ultimately generating more liquidity for themselves. Now let's see what unfolds next in the price action. As you can see, price initially moved upwards and reached the inducement zone, luring in more traders to open sell positions due to the temporary pullback. This pullback gave the impression that the supply zone was respected and that the price would reverse downwards. However, contrary to expectations, the price sharply pushed upwards, sweeping the liquidity above the inducement zone. Eventually, after mitigating the extreme order block, the price reversed and continued its primary bearish direction with significant momentum. Now, let's take a look at another example. Here, again, we have Euro dollar 15 minute time frame chart. As you can see here, price is in an uptrend and has formed a series of bullish BOSs. Within this context, we can identify these potential demand areas where the price could potentially reverse and continue its bullish trend. However, the crucial question remains. How can we determine which of these zones is safer to trade and more likely to be respected by the price? As we discussed earlier, we only consider a zone as valid for trading if a liquidity sweep pattern has occurred below or above it. In this case, I would not consider this particular decisional order block as my area of interest because the price did not sweep any liquidity before reaching it. Instead, I view it as an inducement area that creates a liquidity pool below it in the market. As you can see, after the formation of a new higher high, the price experienced a sharp downward movement toward the upper order block. At this point, the price showed a minor reaction to the inducement zone, which was influenced by the buying pressure from traders who entered the market with the belief that the price would reverse from the upper demand zone. However, contrary to their expectations, the price resumed its downward momentum and effectively swept the liquidity that had accumulated below the inducement zone primarily caused by the stop losses of traders who held long positions from the upper order block. Additionally, we can see that after touching the middle order block, the price reversed and initiated a substantial upward movement to clear out the buy side liquidity. We classified the upper order block as an inducement zone because there was no liquidity sweep pattern before price reaches it. As a result, the price did not reverse from this zone but instead utilized it as a source of liquidity, gaining momentum in the process. Conversely, the reversal from the middle order block can be attributed to the sweeping of liquidity below the upper order block. This liquidity sweep provided the necessary fuel for the price to move upwards with increased momentum. That's it, traders. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it informative and useful. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to stay updated on our latest videos. We value your feedback and suggestions. So please leave your comments below and let us know what topics you'd like us to cover in our future videos. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you in the next episode.